Hello and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and today we've got our first impressions for you which is one of these uh, Tempo A400 vehicles. There's a number of these being released, this one being one of the more recent ones. Yes, hello, first impressions day, and we're looking at this, the Tempo A400 Life of Wagen, a German three-wheel delivery van from Miniart in 1 to 35 scale, kit number 35382. And um, I'm looking forward to building this, and in fact, we will be building it on the channel very, very soon in, in the... So, uh, what have we got? Well, we've got a relatively um, small kit, but I have seen some of these built, and, it's, and it is very detailed. Um, I've got a lovely bit of artwork on the front there showing uh, what I assume is some form of ambulance or medical version in a sort of off-white and red colour. Really nice. And effectively, it's a motorbike with a back end. So uh, it would have been a budget machine and, uh, you know, uh, all times in history there's been a requirement for cheap machinery as well as quality machinery. So does a job really well probably. Um, and there are still examples of these knocking around, uh, preserved in, in museums and people run them around as um, uh, reconditioned vehicles and all sorts. So there, there are a few examples that you can go and look at and get a feel for when you do a little bit of research. So uh, the box uh, on this side we've got uh, contact details. I'm still saying registered in Ukraine at this point though. I believe Miniart have moved to Poland now. Uh, that's my understanding. I might, might be slightly wrong there. I know this is pre-invasion because it's got Russian on there and they've removed that more recently. Um, we've got uh, the ends basically cover off what's on the uh, front of the box and then on this side we get our paint options. So there's five paint options, all of them really quite nice actually. Um, we've got police, uh, I'm not quite sure what that is, we'll see in the instructions. Uh, we've got this, the ambulance version that I quite like, a more bright white version and then a postal wagon, and I would have done that one, but I recently did a fire engine, German fire engine ICM kit, and it was exactly the same paint scheme with uh, the red and the black. So I'm going to go with that when I build it. So we have a top opening box, and then we've got our instructions and our single sealed bag with all the parts in, and I need to unpack this. Um, for ready for building so this is the moment we're going to do that so let's put all this to one side and have a look at our instructions so our instructions are very typical mini art um, instructions we've got part images of the vehicle um, and a, a bit of technical drawing it all looks very uh, nicely presented tells us that we've got a highly detailed plastic model kit clear plastic parts, photo etch, decals, and doors can be assembled in the open position. So all sorts of bits and pieces that really you probably want on the kit box rather than on the instructions. Then as we open it up, again, typical for mini art, we get one of our paint instruction options, which in this first instance is the postal wagon is this nice glorious red color showing us the, the paint options and the uh, decal positions really really nice and then when we flip over the page we've got our sprue map so we've got what one two three four five six seven eight plastic sprues one of which is the clear parts a decal sheet and some photo etch and then right at the bottom We've got our colour chart, which covers off Vallejo, Mr. Colour, um, AK Real Colour, Mission Models, MIG Ammo and Tamiya. And then they give you the, the names right at the end there. So actually, for such a small vehicle, quite a long list of, uh, of colours required. 
Then, if we can turn that page over, we get into step one. Now, they give you the step numbers, but it's quite busy looking. So, you, one of the things I tend to do is go in and divide up all the instructions, which can be a little bit difficult when they're quite so busy. Um, you're drawing sort of funny shaped lines to box it off. But I do find that it helps uh, focus yourself when you're when you're going through the instructions. So our build process starts with the um, inside floor pan, the cabin floor pan, um, and we've got something going through the middle there. So I'm, I'm guessing that's uh, a drive shaft or something like that for the rear axle. Um, going through there, we've got the battery going in, which I guess will end up under the seats uh, by the look of it. Um, we've got um, pedals and we've got what I'm guessing is the handbrake because it's on a ratchet. Um, so we've got well, um, accelerator, um, clutch is that, and, and um, brake, I'm guessing. Um, then we've got the uh, front uh, engine firewall with the windscreen all, all in one um, and we've got some components going in there. Now I'm just interested to see what's it saying, 04, 04, yeah black. So yeah that's uh, on my research these are all sort of um, semi gloss black or even gloss black. So, um, interesting. Um, so we've got some bits going in there, then we've got the seat base going in and the back of the seat is being put onto the bulkhead there. Um, photo etch wipers going in on this stage, well, nether in a month for the Sundays. These are a separate colour, they're red rather than the, the white of the rest of the body on the version that I'm going to do, so I can afford to leave them off until right at the end, which allows us then to mask the clear windscreen that they've put, they've put in. Um, so we've got some detail painting to do um, around the, the uh, knobs and switches around the, the single dial there which we have a decal for. Um, we've got a wiper motor as well so there's lots of detail going in there and then we need a, a length of a 0.3 diameter rod to go in and uh, add the, uh, the linkage there for um, something or other, not quite sure what that would be. That goes into that point there. So it must attach to the brake I guess, because it's showing without the accelerator pedal there, so a little bit hard to see. I'm sure it'll come clear when we're assembling. Step six, we're adding the steering wheel and the rear bulkhead and it's so small that this is going to be quite cramped so you're going to have to have done all that sort of detail painting up front. Um, then we're building, um, what's that, that looks like the one of the rear doors. Then we've got, um, I'm not sure if it's one or two doors at the back to be honest. I'm not sure that'll become clear. Then we're building up the um, cabin doors which have separate glass. So you could possibly do your research, find out how they work, but there's a window winder there. So you might be able to um, show that part down, although that looks like it might be the window frame. So you might not be able to do that. Um, then we're doing the uh, body sides, we've got separate mud guards going in and the indicator flappers um, going in. Again, these are a separate colour on my build so that makes it uh, nice and easy for painting, we can do that separately. And then we've got the rear suspension uh, being installed and we can see the wheel hubs going on there and the drive shaft, so really nice. So I don't know whether I, this is four wheel, uh, four front wheel drive or rear wheel drive. Um, be interesting to know, wouldn't it? Um, then we've got um, the A-frame going on. Then we're building up the the tyres, and that's interesting. Quite often, Mini Art do 
multiple layers of the tires and you build it up out of five uh, parts so that you've got the tread but that's not the case here um, we appear to have a hub option so you can have just the wheel without the uh, with the with the hub uh, without the hub cap on or with the uh, hub cap on um, so that's interesting um, and then we're putting those on it's got sidewall um, stuff on on both sides um, and then we've got for the experience modelers we've got um, some photo etch clips to put in with some scratch built um, cable which you'd probably use soldering wire if you can um, because it's nice and easy to manipulate so brake pipes I would guess and we'd have to find where they terminate at some point um, so yeah it shows you where they go but where they're going after that who knows um, then we are building up the um, body bottom um, so we might do this in a slightly different order why have I built up the body sides when I I don't need to just yet um, but we've got a number plate and rear uh, sort of tail lights going on there then we're putting the uh, body section in body panels going on it is two doors okay so one of them needed building up the other one didn't uh, roof going on doors going on so that's all the bodywork done other than the the bonnet really which is a single piece right so we're at step 20 now and we're starting to build the engine so step one one two three four five individual pieces for something that's going to be like that lovely um, then we've got a bit of um, scratch building to put some pipe work in um, that looks like the manifold to me not that i'm remotely an expert um more parts coming together um then we've got the radiator going in we've got all the hoses with the nicely depicted uh clips jubilee clips that'd be nice um that's our exhaust silencer box and exhaust so a single piece just to go in um and then we've got well it's effectively the mudguard isn't it and and the forks just like on a motorbike um, and then we've got uh, that which builds up into our wheel hub building up another wheel so because you've got the different hub options you could mix it up you could have one one of the hub caps miss, missing maybe um, which would be uh, quite cool um, especially if you're doing uh, an older version maybe um, then we've got um, the wheel being installed so we put that part in then put the wheel in then we've got a little bit more um, pipe work to do the uh, scratch building pipe work to do um, but again it's not showing you where it terminates it's just saying going into there so I guess it says one two three so they're giving you a nice close-up. Ah, right, okay. So connects up to the linkages of those pedals. One, two, three. Okay, right. That's That makes sense now. Um, so how the ones from the rear axle then tie into that, I don't know. Well, I don't, it doesn't, it's not clear to me where they go. Ah, right, it is now. So as we turn over and we put the rear axle in, we can see that that is terminating in there. So as long as you've got them a bit oversized, you can trim them to length or maybe even feed them into those holes. You'll have cables going to there. So this bit has no cables. It's clearly going under the seat. So yeah, perfect. All clear now. Um, then we're building the bonnet um, and we've got again two options on the grill one with the FAMO logo what um, FAMO logo tempo logo one without um, so we've got the single piece molded body we've got a little photo etch clasp and that locks into this little 
um, hook this bracket here so the hook goes into the bracket and that's how it gets pinned open in fact you can see it there um, you've got the little clips on each side um, again photo etch they'll be tiny photo etch number plate going on um, yeah don't know whether you're gonna to have to shape that or not I suspect it'll need a little bit of forming um, and then we can put that on so I think my intention is pretty much to have it um, either um, in its up position so you can see all the engine or leave it loose so that you can um, put it in the up position or have it in the closed position or if we're going to do um, a, a little sort of diorama thing with it we might even have it sort of disconnected and on the floor next to it really don't know at this stage um, but you've got plenty of options there so step 31 we we're basically on final fit now so we've got the headlamps going on separate uh, lenses which is good to see um, and then we've got the uh, wing mirror going on which is mounted on the um, uh, frame next to the windscreen there with a little photo etched bracket um, and then we are done so it doesn't look that complicated but I bet you it's really fiddly so um, then we're back onto our paint schemes so the first one we looked at let's just flick back because I didn't read out where it was the first one we looked at was Germany 38 to 45 Deutsche Reich Post, so uh, postal service um, throughout the um, Reich years. Very nice. Um, I, I really like that. That I'd be very tempted to do that one. Then we've got um, um, the police, Germany 38 to 45. So they tootled around in this, which is... Um, interesting um, so all black gloss black um, with um, uh, the eagle um, and swastika logo on there so that that's quite a nice little vehicle as well actually um, I'd be tempted to do that one then uh, uh, Deutsche Reichsbahn I'm not sure what that means um, 38 to 45 so again any period in the war this covers that off um, and that's um gray and yeah probably the least attractive of the options for me um but you know it's um it's a vehicle that existed so depending on what you're doing and your dioramas and what have you interesting um deutsche roots Kruz, germany so i don't know what that is it's clearly medical um yeah um and that is white all over um i'm guessing the hubcaps are chrome but that again is really nice got the nice little eagle on there um and then finally you've got this uh which is exactly the same right cruz so is that red cross deutsche red cross germany 43 to 45 um yeah, I think so. Uh, that's what I'm guessing. Um, and this is the red trim and seems to be a slightly different colour. So let's just check out what's that. That's 01 and that's 10. So if we look at our paint call outs, I'll go back to the start. So um, 01 is beige okay and 10 dark gray that's never dark gray oh one 10 that's not dark gray that's a typo surely um i think that should be 15 white Ooh, have we spotted a typo oh, can't turn the page when you want yeah, it's definitely saying 10. Well, 10, that's not... Well, they're saying that's 7, so that for me is dark grey. 
Seven being grey. Yeah, they've made a mistake there, I'm sure of it. Well, anyway, it that looks, if that's grey, that can't be dark grey, can it? So <laughs> something, something wrong there. Um, but, yeah. Uh, and they've got this as beige. So that's interesting, isn't it? So um, I think this will look really nice weathered. You've got the light um, bodywork, which gives you lots and lots of uh, options for um, weathering, and it'll show it off really well. So where you've got rust and where you've got um, uh, streaking dirt and what have you, it'll show up beautifully on here. Um, the red trim just makes it pop a little bit. It also means that we've got various little bits that we've got to paint separately. So we're really going to have to think about uh, the painting of this. Um, nice decals. So, yeah, um, uh, that is definitely the way I am going with that one there. So that's the instructions. Let's have a look at the decals next. So our decals come in the clear parts, um, which always worries me, but there is no damage. Um, so these are uh, printed in the Ukraine. Um, they're okay. They're, um, I've never had a problem with mini art decals. Um, register's always pretty good. So yeah, I, I, they're nice. I mean, a lot of it is, is various number plates. And we've got the various logos. Um, the swastikas are all missing. So if you want them on, you're going to have to um, draw them in in some way. Um, and then we've got the three um, red cross one uh, that are used on two of the paint schemes. Um, so, yeah, they're all very nice. There's n I wouldn't say there was any excessive um, uh, decal film. Um, yeah, nothing wrong with them. Don't have a problem with mini art decals. Then we've got our um, cardboard sleeve. So I always find it interesting that the, they put the decals in with the clear parts where they might get damaged and then they go to these extreme lengths with that. I mean, the decal sheet would have fitted it in there as well. They could have put both in there and, and they'd both been protected. Anyway, um, it's a small sheet of uh, photo etch. We've got our two grill options, which are really, really nicely done. Um, the, the mesh on there is very fine. It's lovely. Um, we've got a little uh, mini art tempo logo um, thing there. So you can use that on your display if you wish. Um, I tend to collect them, I've got a little place I put them, any, anything like that, um, just as memories of them being built. Um, then we've got the hook on there, we've got the number plates, very, very fine uh, windscreen wipers, um, the latches for the bonnet, and then the two little, uh, the rest of them are little clips for um, tying down any of the cables. So, yeah, very nice. That, nothing wrong with that. I'm happy with those. Not too much um, to do either, but they are quite delicate. Okay, sprue A is our roof, and that covers uh, both the cab and the back end. There's four ejector pins there that need filling if you're going to have the back end open and see in. Um, they are recessed, so they'll need filling, but they won't be a problem to, to sort out. Um, yeah, uh, nice. We've got our sprue gates under the lip by the looks of it. Um, so we shouldn't have any issues. The, the gate is no wider than the lip when it meets the lip. So you can just cut them off and sand it flush and that'll be perfect. So they've thought about the cleanup of that, which is beautiful. So yeah, very, very nice. 
sprue B and we've got uh, uh, our wheels here with the various different hub options. Um, so you've got the chrome hub option which has got the logo on or just with the dust cap on. So yeah, it'd be nice to perhaps swap that out a little bit and have a mix, I think. Um, tire tread is lovely. Um, and then we've got the... Oh, okay, I can see you've got the back of the wheel moulded in as well. Got you. So, and then you've got some tyre there that fits in there where you've got um, a line anyway. So that should be... Uh, nice and easy to work. Um, got a little bit of sink in our little Notex lamp there, just on the top. I mean, a spot of filler and a quick sand and you're done. Um, didn't see that we were using that though, particularly. Um, so some lovely fine molding on there. There's some bits and pieces that I'm not recognizing. So I think they're for military versions and we we won't be using those because this is very much civilian versions that we've got here um, that's our um, connection point for the front wheel there our little radiator the mesh is nicely done bit of seam to clean up but nothing else parts are all lovely and crisp um, and I'm not seeing any flash so it's just seam clean up on all of this lot and um, plug and play. Yeah, some lovely nice details in here. Um, some very nice molding. I'll take photographs um, and we'll look at those at the end of the video rather than at the end of each sprue um, because we've not got a lot of parts here to get through. So let's have a look what's our next sprue. So our next sprue is BA and we've got, uh, well we've got the seats here we can see um, and they look quite nice and just, there is a little bit of um, depression in the cushion but it's hard to pick up on camera but I can feel it. Um, not so much on the front though. Um, it's uh, It's got some nice detail we've got. The, the backs of the dials there so there should be a big thick wiring loom that sort of comes around that top edge and down the corner so you can put that in if you wish uh, something I might do might have a play um, and then we've got um, the, the, they're already uh, and appreciate that they're already molded in so I have to do them a different color right and then we've got the dials at the front there's a, a tiny bit of sink on the dial, but to be honest, once you've got the decal on, I don't think you'll notice it. Um, nicely done mud guards. Yeah, nothing wrong with those. Um, our door cards are nice. We've got some nice detail on there with uh, fastener heads and the like. Um, then our outer doors. Um, yeah, we've got nicely depicted sill trim and uh, bezel for the uh, handles. Our pedals have got texture on, they're not just smooth, so that's nice. Steering wheel has got the finger depressions on the back, so again, also nice, really, really nice. Some really tiny parts here as well. Um, our wheel hubs all look good. Our exhaust nice but not opened up so we'll have to do that these are slide molded parts here and they've chosen to do the slide molded end the um the location hole for the exhaust and actually interestingly i mean our, our uh, lamp backs have got bulbs in which is lovely and what they've done is slide molded the location uh, hole for that uh, which means it should be precision so that's nice um, and then that's our handbrake there with the ratchet, which will look good. I and mean, a lot of these parts, for me, are individually painted and, and installed is the best way um, to build them. Yeah, very nice. Then we've got, unfortunately, we've got some ejector pins in the, the base plate, but the seat is going to cover those. So... 
Uh, it'll be a case of dry fitting the assemblies unpainted to see whether we need to fill them or not. Um, but this is sort of the step one piece. So I'll be wanting to paint this and weather this before we install anything. So we'll be doing a lot of building up of assemblies and then painting and then final fit, I think. Battery box, that looks cool as well. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Very nice. Uh, next is Sprue DB, which is one of our side panels. So why they've done that one panel on its own, I don't know. Um, we've got nice hinge detail at the ends there. Um, and a nice positive location for our mud guard um, with that back wall moulded in. All very good. Um, I guess this forms the inside. We haven't, we haven't got a second skin. So we've got some ejector pins to deal with, one in each corner. Um, one, two seem to be raised, the other two seem to be slightly depressed. Okay. Yeah. Spruce CD has um, our subframe for the, um, underneath the, the back of the vehicle. So we've got our, um, I'm guessing that's a, like a, a big rubber bush that this the spring there um, of the suspension and the suspension arms you can see there's a little joint in the middle so they're independent which is cool um, and we've got the little um, a-frame on there which gives them uh, the, the camber movement um, and then the, the frame build-up parts all lovely detailed and really really thin like there's such finesse in mini arts molding it is proper nice so other than a bit of uh, seam cleanup, all good. CF now, and this is our bonnet. All molders as one piece, um, which emulates uh, the, the real thing. Um, so we just have to uh, get rid of the ejector pin um, points there. And the gate is again, as thick as the part. So we trim it off, sand it back, job done. Uh, nice crisp part at the end um, yeah nothing wrong with that um, our vents aren't see-through but at this scale it'd be difficult to do there is because this is slide molded there is a slight slide molding seam here and here it's very light I can just about see it in the light I'll probably pick up Actually, it runs to that point there on that corner and then it runs all the way down there. Uh, that will definitely get picked up under paint. So it needs very light sand to get that out. Um, but yeah, that all looks good. And then we've got the little depression there for our photo etch hook. So yeah, um, and obviously if you're gonna have this in the up position, you've got to think about the fact that you can't see um these so you might want to score some in that's that might change my mind on whether i have this open or just removable so you can see in yeah um, and then we've got the gaps here at the bottom for the the little latches that lock it down right it's a lovely bit of molding though lovely bit of molding Last of our um, coloured plastic parts, Sprue EA, um, and we've got the other side uh, panel, so exactly the same as we've seen. Um, the rear bulkhead, uh, ejector pin marks hidden behind the seat, which is lovely, all right and proper, um, so that's nice. Our floor pan, no ejector pins on that at all, so that's lovely. Uh, nice fastener detail on all those pan uh, panels of wood, yeah really good then we've got our um, rear doors there which have got lovely hinge detail on them um, and the bezel and lock for the back and no ejector pins good nice uh, internal detail as well and then this one has the uh, little hinge mechanism that unlatches it top and bottom uh, to go in then we've got um, more mud guards so we've already seen mud guards so there must be two different types of mudguard, so that's interesting. I hadn't picked that up. 
in the instructions. It may be that they're for different versions and we don't use them. That's our little locking mechanism, um, which has a tiny amount of flash on. I'll be generous and say it's thick seam. Um, so yeah, um, but no imperfections, lovely and crisp. <laughs> um, we've got bezels at the back. So if you want to wire those rear lights, you possibly could do if you can work out where the wire would go. Um, yeah. Yeah, I quite fancy doing a bit of detailing on this. I don't know if there is an upgrade set for the Tempo. I'd be interested to see. Right, that is the last of our plastic parts. So let's have a look at our clear parts. So uh, what's this? Sprue ED. So we've got a clear windscreen. Uh, of which uh, I appear to have an air bubble in it. Not sure whether that's going to be a problem or not, uh, based on how I'm wanting to model it. But yeah, we've got an air bubble in there. That's that's annoying. Um, then we've got our lenses for our tail lamps. Uh, rear window for um, the the rear bulk header though I'm not sure that we use that in this one don't think that's applicable to this kit headlamp lenses and then we've got side um, windows which have the frame in so yeah we can't show those in a part down position unless you cut that out which would be tricky but doable and replace with acetate um, but yeah, there you go. Um, the nice and clear, um, no distortion, no distortion at all. Really nice clear parts other than I've got this bubble in mine. You can see a little inclusion. Right, let's take some photographs. You can have a look at that and then we'll wrap up. So there we have it, Mini Arts 1 to 35 scale Tempo A400 Lifer Wagon in its Red Cross um, guise. It's um, <laughs> it, it's a, a lovely little model actually. Um, what are my first impressions? Well, um, it's a typical Mini Art offering, which means it's good quality 
well engineered, um, nicely brought together. Yeah, all the parts are stunning. Um, it will, it, mini art kits are always greater than the sum of the parts, um, as in they can be a little bit fiddly and you have to put a little bit of thought in, but you end up with something that is very, very accurate. So yeah, I'm looking forward to building this. Like I say, we'll be getting stuck into this very, very, very soon. And interestingly, as we look at this front cover, I've noticed that they've swapped out the wheels as well. So that's fabulous, just like how I intend to do it. Um, so yeah, um, I think this is um, yeah a, a really nice little offering. It's something different. There was lots of these um, used in all sorts of geysers and they have a whole variety of these in, in hundreds of different types. Well, not quite hundreds, but lots of different types. So yeah, uh, it'd be really interesting to um, pull this together and see uh, what it looks like when it builds up. There's a bit of scratch building needed and um, I'm looking forward to not just scratch building it, getting a bit of weathering done and really rinsing the kit for as much as we can get. They're not expensive kits, they're well engineered. Um, yeah, I can't fault it, I really can't. So if we go through it as, as I uh, normally do uh, now, um, instructions, um, a little bit busy, but they're, they're clear, everything appears to be in there. Um, you don't really know till you start using them, but from my brief overview, I don't have a problem with the instructions. It's calling out paint as we go. Um, it's blowing bits up, saying if you want to add these scratch build bits, you can, but you don't need to. So for me, I don't have any anything I can say about the instructions that's negative. Um, plastic parts, I've got nothing negative to say about those. There's no issues. Crisp clean it's just seam, seam clean up that you get on of on, on anything um, photo etch very nicely done lots of finesse a little bit delicate but at least it's accurate and uh, there's not too much of it what you have got is fairly simple to do most complicated bits will be the um, little clips for holding down the um, uh, the, the pipe work that you've got to form yourself but other than that um, shouldn't be any issues with that. Clear parts, putting aside my unfortunate bubble, they are lovely. They're crystal clear, there's no distortion, they look absolutely great. So I have no issues with that either. So very, very good. Um, yeah, so there you go. It's, it's a, a 10 out of 10 kit. Nothing I can say about it that puts me off. Can't wait to build it. So if you've been thinking about the tempos and, and haven't dipped your toe in, you now get an understanding of what you get in the box. Um, if that was useful or helpful in any way, then please hit the like button. Uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed. We do loads of stuff on this channel. Um, and um, you can always hit super thanks if you want to say thank you and donate to the channel. All the money goes into the channel so we can buy kits for review and products for review and so on. So thank you very much for looking in. It's greatly appreciated. You enjoy your modeling and I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.